once you realize that there are different systems at play, what you really need to do with your personal wealth to be able to preserve your wealth or increase your wealth when it comes to wealth on a tangible level is appreciate that there are different systems at play. And once you understand that there are different systems at play, what you need to do is be diversified. Hi, this is Chicho. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to our little discussion we're having regarding personal finance. And we're still going to continue on for where we left off um, regarding automation, regarding timelines, regarding some of the most important things we should always keep in mind before we decide to participate in any type of system, maybe you know, putting in our time, putting in our energy, putting in our finances in that system, in that project, right? So basically, when it comes to personal finances, right? When it comes to us trying to manage our wealth, because that's what it really means when we're trying to, when we're thinking about personal finances, what we're trying to do in general is think about how we're going to either preserve our wealth or we're going to increase our wealth. And our, you know, wealth is so uh, subjective, right? It's so subjective because some people only consider tangible objects. Um, to be wealth or that's the way the programming has, has been set to think about wealth as either increasing your assets that you have or the money in the bank that you have or whatever it is but wealth to many people means many different things right so what we're going to do specifically in this video is talk about more of the tangible assets uh, tangible items uh, in regards to wealth, but please keep this in mind that, you know, we talked about this in the first video, um, some of the things you should keep in mind when you're thinking about your personal finances. And number one on the list was health, right? And health, you know, only becomes tangible, something tangible that you can actually use in, in, in our present economic system to a certain degree when you have problems associated with your health because you have to spend money, right? So there's... There's no price tag that you can put on certain things that certain people consider to be uh, the most important things you should always, always achieve for, right? Uh, try to work towards when it comes to uh, managing your wealth, when it comes to personal finances, right? So that's my little intro to this, uh, to this video, to this talk that we're going to do. Um, because I, you know, I want to make sure that uh, you do appreciate that this isn't financial advice. This is just looking at the different systems at play in our current society and quantifying those systems because that's what mathematics does. Mathematics, one of the powers of mathematics is that it allows us to look at different types of systems, right? If we can quantify those systems, quantify those systems, and in general, we can quantify anything right really we can quantify anything we've talked about this in the past and you know the simplest way you can quantify something that most people think that you can't quantify is you can ask someone on a scale of one to ten how much they love something or they love someone right and right away as soon as that question is posed you're trying to quantify a system and as soon as someone replies with a number then they've quantified it as well, right? So in general, mathematics, um, you can use it in the most rudimentary way to be able to quantify things, right? And that's what um, what the power of mathematics is. And once we are able to quantify things, what we can do is create visuals, create graphs to be able to understand those systems. And what we're going to do before we can have a full appreciation for this, what we have to do is sort of define some terms, okay? And there's a couple of terms that we need to define because let me read the working title for you again, right? Personal finance, currency and money. Diversify and invest in what you know, keeping in mind the systems at play, right? So the first thing we have to do is define the terms currency and money, okay? Because the rest of that 
this video diversify and invest in what you know keeping in mind the different systems at play is the visual we're about to create so what we're going to do is define these two terms for us okay and the terms are going to be the meaning of the terms is going to become more and more clear uh, what the difference between them is and which one you want to give more emphasis to right once we you know start talking about the different systems at play but here's um, the definition right so let's talk about currency first currency as a direct translation means something in circulation okay so currency is something our society community uses that's in circulation for us to do, be able to do trade right on a fairly rapid level and we'll talk about this right so there's personally there's three types of currency I don't know if this is set absolute absolute or not because after all this research sort of broke it down into three forms of currency there's the first type of currency which is uh, backed by a commodity or a collectible okay and we'll talk about the collectible I'm going to point you towards that uh, an article that is definitely worth reading right so currency for me can be backed by either a commodity or a collectible that's one type of currency another type of currency could be backed by faith trust or power military might right when it comes to governments right okay the third type of currency that is in play that I can see playing out a lot more right now in our current economic system is mainly due to in a big way to the advent of the technology of, of computing power right is basically goodwill credit karma if you want to think about it sort of you know and you can build credit in multiple different systems right if you done banking a lot with a certain type of bank or certain type of investment company and they've seen you've been success, success, successful in your endeavors right you've basically built up a lot of credit with them and they'll be more inclined to loan you money this also works on the same level when it comes to a community and in a big way it's working out in our on the internet right now when people are creating a lot of work and there's a lot of user um, um, viewer supported you uh, user supported content coming up right so for me there's three different types of currencies that I'm thinking about and there's certain type of currencies that bounce between all these three okay commodity collect commodity back collectible backed right faith trust power okay and goodwill and credit keep that in mind okay regarding currency and currency is basically something in circulation that's being used uh, by the majority of the people that uh, is used to do trade okay and what we're going to do right now is i'm going to read you a little quote regarding currency and i really like this quote the sentence defining what currency is and it's um it's a quote from the same person that we talked about in the previous video when it comes to um, what we have to keep in mind uh, the implications of automation our current economic system right and the automation played out really well um, one of the places that's played out or rolled out fairly rapidly is, is Wall Street and the article that we talked about we did some reading of in the last video which is uh, behind the curtain the full Monty by Martin Armstrong and I highly recommend uh, people reading this article it's sort of a insiders behind the scene look at how the stock market Wall Street works so it's a quote from Armstrong and that article he wrote in 2010 and this quote is from July just a few days ago 2017 okay and quoting Mr. Um, Martin Armstrong quote currency is the medium of exchange which sits on the opposite side with tangible assets okay and I really like that definition of currency currency is the medium of exchange which sits on the opposite side of the scale with tangible assets right the only thing I would change with this sentence I would take out the word tangible I would say currency is the medium of exchange which sits on the opposite side of the scale with 
assets. And assets kicks us into the term money, okay? Because money is larger than currency. Money encompasses everything because anything can be considered to be an asset. Anything could be money, right? And let's define the word money first. And I'm going to read you a quote uh, from uh, Dawkins regarding money, which, you know, I'm not a huge fan of, but it sort of shows uh, the scale of what money can be, right? So money basically serves three functions, okay? Uh, by definition, that's what money does. Money serves as a medium, a medium of exchange, which is really currency, right? So money has to serve as a medium of exchange. It has to be a unit of account and a store of value. Okay, and that's really important, the store of value for our conversation right now. Okay, for the visual that we're going to create, for the graphic we're going to create when it comes to trying to appreciate this table of data, right? So money is a medium of exchange, a unit of currency, and a store of value. Okay. Now, and when I say anything can be money, really, anything can be money, right? Your time is money, as the saying goes, right? Love, you know, for someone that's not involved in that may not be tangible. For people involved in that interaction, it is tangible, right? Can we quantify it? 100%. How much do you love something or love someone on a scale of 1 to 10, right? So anything can be money. Compost is money, right? If you need, if you're a farmer, right? There's an amazing, um, once you think about it on that level, uh, it really expands the different types of systems that you can participate in when it comes to your personal finances, right? And I'm going to read you a quote regarding money, and it's, took the quote out of this article, so I haven't read the article that Dawkins or the listened to the lecture that Dawkins made, which this quote is taken. And the quote is from this article, and let me read you the quote first, and then we're going to talk about this article a little bit, because it's, well, tell us what money is. Once you read this article, it's a very important article, historically anyway, but here's a quote from Dawkins, uh, and I'm not sure when he made this quote. The quote from Dawkins is this, quote, Money is a formal token of delayed reciprocal altruism. Okay. I had to read that a few times. I had to look up what the word altruism meant. And altruism means selflessness, right? It means concern for the welfare of others. So if we do a little substitution and read that sentence again, paraphrasing, I guess, Dawkins right now, money is a formal token of delayed reciprocal concern for the welfare of others, right? And this quote uh, is taken from this article, and this article is absolutely a must-read um, if you want to appreciate uh, uh, the role of money in our society, in our human evolution. And the article is Shelling Out the Origins of Money by Nick Zabel, okay? And this is, sorry about the print quality, my printer is acting up, right? Let me do this straight so you can see it. Oops, zone it, zoom in, all right? And, you know, it's been about a week that I've been going through this article and doing a lot of research and putting all this data together, a little bit longer actually, going through some of my notebooks, notes as well, and stuff like this, right? But this article is a must read, as it, you know, Along the same lines as the previous article by Martin Armstrong when it comes to understanding Wall Street, that's a must read for understanding Wall Street specifically. And automation, if you want to appreciate what it's about to do in our current economic system. This article, Shelling Out the Origins of Money by Nick Zabo, and he wrote this in 2002, 
is a must read if you want to appreciate human evolution because this guy took it to the level of human evolution right so keep that in mind that money is going to is going to be everything uh, anything can be money and I've you know while I was going through the data that I was going through and going through this article I sort of tried to take a nice sample of some of the stuff that I came across some of the stuff that I'm personally invested in some of the stuff discussed in this article and the previous article to try to give you a good representation of this okay so that's what we're about to partake in uh, create okay I'm just doing a little scan of my notes right keeping that in mind okay cool now And one thing uh, I'll mention as well is uh, what we're about to talk about definitely overlays with uh, series four of the language of mathematics because that stuff is, you know, we're talking about units and ratios uh, and graphs and functions, right? And units and ratios, as we talked about in uh, one of the videos for the language of mathematics series four is once you're thinking about, once you appreciate units and ratios, then what you can do is take a look at different systems and be able to jump from one system to another system as long as you have the conversion factor, right? We sort of drew that as a Venn diagram where they overlap. And as long as you have one link from one system to another system, you can jump, you can do a conversion from that system to another system, which is what we really need to be able to do when it comes to managing our finances, right? So what we're going to do first to create this visual is put it on a Cartesian coordinate system on an X and Y axis, right? And what we're going to do is put time on the X axis, okay? So we're going to go from here. Might have to add a little bit more to it as well. So we're going to put time on the x-axis. Okay. On the y-axis, we're going to put value, okay, as we talked about in the previous videos, right? The y-axis is value. Now, value, again, depending on what you're interested in, what you consider wealth to be, what, what you want to maintain or grow, right? Your value, your y-axis is going to vary, right? So this is going to be value. Okay. Now, for our purposes, because we're going to do a visualization, we're going we're to create a visual of multiple different systems, we have to standardize all those systems, right? We, need, we really need to standardize something because for us to be able to compare one thing to another thing, we need to have some kind of relationship between those two, right? This is something that has played out throughout human history, right? When one civilization met another civilization, if that civilization had some type of currency or money, something they gave value to, and this other so society had a different type of currency and something different they valued then they had to come to a compromise right to be able to do trade to be to be able to do commerce and for us what we're going to do to simplify matters we're going to use us dollars as the currency that we're going to compare everything to okay so we're going to use us dollars usd right that's going to be our currency and my apologies right off the bat if some of the stuff is going to be on the little bit small right but um, we're not really again we're not really concerned about the absolute values of the things we're more interested in the trend right from the difference what's happening between one system and another system just get a visual of that right so for us to be able to use the US dollars as 
basically uh, the currency that we're going to communicate in, right? I mean, the reason we're using the U.S. dollar is because one thing uh, about currency is the currency is sort of uh, the form. It's not money, but currency is basically the 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 thing in circulation that we're using to do trade. And when it comes to the U.S. dollars, U.S. dollars are accepted everywhere in the world, right? Right? So almost everywhere in the world. There are some places if you, you know, if you go to certain small tribes and the jungles of somewhere, if you go to, into the deserts somewhere, or if you go to isolated communities, if you give them U.S. dollars, I don't care what the denomination is from one to I don't I don't think they make a thousand dollar currencies anymore. They might if you give them a thousand dollars, they'll look at those things as having the same value because to them that has no meaning, right? They might be able to trade you something for that, right? But they won't give it the same value, same worth that we do, right? In our current economic system. But U.S. dollars is a good measure to do our comparison in because it's accepted in most in in most of the world and one thing with currency that makes it a preferred form of currency if that currency is liquid that means you can exchange it everywhere anywhere rapidly and in general you want currency to have a good uh, high velocity and these are some terms that we're not going to really delve into in this video we'll get into more when we're talking about the economics of Wall Street, the mathematics of Wall Street, but basically, um, uh, liquidity means that you can get rid of your money very rapidly without it losing its value too much, right? Because there might be different types of currency at play, but if they're, you know, everyone is not accepting it, then what happens is the value of that currency fluctuate fluctuates right the you know there's a bigger range to it from the minimum to the maximum depending on how quickly you need to convert that currency right to a different types of monetary system or a different type of money or or a type of money or a different type of currency right so if there is high liquidity then the price doesn't vary fluctuate as much you can get rid of it fast and if there is high velocity velocity means how quickly is the money changing hands from one person to another person how basically how rapid is the flow of the money supply throughout the society it's like a river right is it a fast running river right or is it a slow meandering river right so high velocity basically means it's a fast running river where money is changing hands very very rapidly and there's measures between volatility and uh, liquidity and uh, how um, rapid the money is flowing within the society right it's velocity okay and the US dollar fits that create criteria for us okay so for us to be able to do this comparison what we need to do is appreciate what the US dollar has done over time right and the US dollar over time has basically done this the time frame we're going to go from and we have to take a look at this thing in time frames and what we're going to do we're going to go from 1900 to 2017 okay so we're going from 1900 hopefully that comes out that's not too small and we're going to go 2017 okay and basically the way I set this up is um, we talked about how to break a line into pieces. We put out a video uh, for the language of mathematics on how to break a line into pieces. But what I did to make life easy for us, right? Since I have a ruler, basically I made every one inch to represent 10 years, okay? So let me put in little ticks every 10 years here. Okay. Approximately anyway, or little dots I'll expand on them. Let's do this so we don't. I've got this thing taped down. I don't want it to be to break the tape, so it doesn't move. Right. And 
2017 is actually like right here because this end line here is 2020. Uh, so this is 1900, 1910, 1920, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 2000, right? 2010. Oh, did we go too far? Let's see. 1910, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 2000, 2010, and 2020. That's right. I almost tricked myself. So we're going to create our visual ranging from a time span of 1900 to 2017. And first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the U.S. dollar, what it's done, from 1900 to 2017. And we're gonna use, start off with $100 in 1900, right? And the $100 we're gonna put, I'm just gonna put up here, actually, should we do this? Make it more accurate, let's use the ruler, right? So, I made this every inches, and we're gonna go fairly high on this. So, Let's make, if we make this 1, 10, 100, because what I want to do, I'm going to put this on a log scale to be able to create this visual. So 100,000, 10,000, 100,000, a million, and we're going to go to 10 million. Yep. So we're going to put 100 here, and we're going to put ticks here and here. And every two inches, we're putting ticks in. Little marketers on, okay. So, what we got is a hundred dollars here. Just oh, running dry, a little bit. Let's use this guy. So let's put one hundred dollars here. Actually, we can put this. Okay, so hundred dollars, hundred U.S. dollars in nineteen hundred. Basically, uh, before this, it you know fluctuated as we've talked about. You can take a look at any timeline and zoom in to a shorter timeline. You'll see fluctuations, right? So we're going to smooth things out a little bit, right? So U.S. dollar basically from a hundred dollars in 1900 right and a hundred dollars in today's if you had a hundred dollars in 1900 in today's value it's worth two thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars okay that that would have been his purchasing power and we'll talk about purchasing power as well but basically a hundred dollars in 1900 is not equivalent to a hundred dollars in 2017 i should be putting ticks on this one too right so it's not the same as uh, $100 in 2017 because what's happened is in that time the US dollar has depreciated lost this value inflation has depleted its buying power which is what you can think about as this graph this graph is to a certain degree it's about the different economic systems at play to a certain degree it's you could title it as purchasing power, buying power, uh, or your net worth. There could be multiple titles on this graph, okay? So the U.S. dollar from 1900 to 2017 has done this. It's basically had the, had the value of $100. to depreciate a little bit. In 1920, it dropped down. It did a little dip, and then it went up, up to 1940 or so. It gained back about 50% of its value and slowly depreciated. And right now, the U.S. dollar, $100 in 1900 is worth around $3.07 in today's uh, in purchasing power. That's what its value is, right? Let's do this. I bought, uh, I went and got myself a whole bunch of little sticky things. <laughs> things that we're gonna use to put on uh, put on the graph here right because we're gonna have a few different few different notes so what should we put money in 
Uh, let's put this in green, I guess. The green back. Let's put it in green. So, I'm going to do overlay this with 100 and write this bigger so we see it well. Okay. So, this is 100. Actually, let me do this the other way. That way it's sticking in the right uh, 100 okay. so $100 US here is now worth And if we're doing a graph of this from 100 and this was zero, right? This guy would be like down here, okay? And the tick mark would be, well, I might as well do the tick mark. If that was 100, that'd be 50. So we're gonna break this down. So it'd be like down here, all right? This is where the tick would be. It's not worth very much, right? So the US dollar has gone. That's how much it's lost as value. Now, before we kick this up, let's assume this is a linear scale right now. Let's assume this is zero. Okay. Let's put a zero on there for now. That's zero. And I'm not putting the dollar value symbol here because we know the scale is dollars and some of the numbers we're going to hit, they're going to be bigger. And I want to make sure you can see them as best as possible anyway. Okay. So if this was a linear scale, what we have to do now is think about what our purchasing power, right, for our currency, the U.S. dollars has been over time because the U.S. dollar since it's lost its value, it doesn't buy as much, right? And what we're gonna do, we're just gonna use the generic government uh, measure of consumer price index, okay? And the consumer price index is basically, um, most governments have this as far as I know, almost every government has this, and you know, I don't know if any government doesn't have this, but basically consumer price index is, is the government going out there, doing a survey, collecting data, and looking at different uh, components, different things that people purchase, and using a little bit of mathematics and giving a measure to that, like quantifying that, right? Because what they do is every year, they take a look at that same stuff and they quantify it and see if the value has increased, if the, per, if the number has increased. And if the number has increased, that basically means your purchasing power has decreased right it means you can you can't buy as much and basically the graph what it does is from you know the basically your purchasing power has gone like this okay over time so we don't have a cpi number for 1900 right it starts off in 1913 but we could estimate it we got a cpi basically you could do a reverse calculation um, the CPI came, comes out to 8.9, okay? So let's do the CPI in, in pink, okay? So in 1900, the CPI would be 8.9. And right now, basically would mean 8.9. Basically, it means if you, an item costs 8.9 would be somewhere around here, right? If it was linear if we're still talking about a linear system, right? And if we're talking about a linear system, basically what happened with the CPI is, the CPI in 2017 is 244. Make sure I got my number right, 244, 244. Okay. And the CPI again, it's, 
so we're going to go 100 here and that's going to be 200 244 is going to be around here right so the cpi basically means this if an item cost eight dollars and ninety cents in 2019 right if you could buy something for eight dollars and ninety cents in sorry not 2019 1900 right that same item would cost you 244 dollars right so your purchasing power has decreased you can't buy as much right if something costs you basically nine dollars and 1900 that same object would have cost you 244 dollars right and this is a very very basic measure right it doesn't take everything into consideration and for many it's not accurate okay for me being one of them i don't consider this thing to be a good measure of inflation because that's what this is really this is really a measure of inflation uh government measured inflation right not inflation that we see personally i see anyway okay and this measure is supposed to take into consideration it's, it's got different components it's sort of as a pie chart here right that's the components it sort of should be in color but i don't really the printing color um so consumer price index it's made up of the following components following categories food and beverages makes up 15 percent of the measure housing is 42 percent of the components right of this of this number in the calculation apparel textiles clothing is three percent transportation is 15 percent medical care is 8.5 percent recreation is 5.6 percent and education is seven percent okay so even though this is the rate of inflation with the government measures what we have to appreciate is the different components rise at different levels okay so i found this you know this chart then i'll provide the links uh, again in the description of this video hopefully this is one of the charts from one of the links i'm going to be providing but basically what happens is the different components sorry about the quality of the graph again you can see here things have gone up at different rates so even if even though this is the core measure and it does fluctuations right it goes right but we can just think about it as a straight line if this has gone up like this the different parts of this measure the cpi the consumer price index have gone up at different rates and some of them have gone up like this some of them are like this right so if you if you look at this thing from this graph is just from 2000 to 2017 okay if you look at this thing you can see the different lines right so from 2000 the oh yeah this isn't in color so i can't tell which one's what um unfortunately but basically medical care costs i believe if i recall correctly have gone up the most and then there's housing and then different levels have gone up and since the consumer price index doesn't take into everything into account here's another chart that's overlaid the previous chart on top of this chart and the wiggly line up here okay this guy up here that's tuition cost so that's not taken into consideration here okay or it might be part of the other components but it's not a huge part it's a small segment right so keep that in mind uh, the different parts of the inflation measure go up at different levels and inflation really doesn't take into consideration uh, the price of energy and that's the price of energy overlaid on top of all this thing right now for us to you know we're not going to delve into the consumer price index the cpi we're going to look at specifically different things that we can actually invest in right because we're not going to do broad measures like this because as individuals we're not institutions to a certain degree we're not we're concerned with the micro not the macro right because these things as you can tell you know we're going from 1900 to 2017 if you're an institution that's been around for hundreds of years this only becomes a fraction of your lifespan fraction of your time frame we've talked about this in asmr math when we talked about um, 
how the perception of time varies with age, right? And this is really important to keep in mind. This is fine and dandy, you know, if inflation is going like this, going like this, this is 117 years. We don't live to be 117 years. We live chunks of this period, right? So if we're living a certain chunk of this period, if the graph is straight, not asymptotic or anything like this, we're okay. But if we're at the part where the graph is doing asymptotic or collapsing completely, then we don't want to be caught up in that, right? So we're going to start off with larger time spans when it comes to U.S. dollars and inflation and stuff like this. I'm going to slowly narrow this gap down to smaller time measures, but we're still going to graph it on this time scale. We could have just changed our scale here and put the different time measure, but we're going to keep it on the same time scale so we have a visual of everything at play, right? So we got our CPI on here. We got our dollars up here. So let's create... Uh, a little legend because we're gonna have some more stickies coming on and we're gonna call this dollars dollars so this guy is dollars the bright Ooh, come back here that's not too high that's good so this is dollars our legend and we have CPI. C P I. Okay. And this is CPI. Okay. Now some of the other stuff that I'm gonna put on here, we won't be able to fit them on a linear scale. So we're gonna change this to a log scale. Okay. And a log scale, we did a video regarding log, uh, exponential log, mid, mid, log rhythmic functions, right? And we're going to delve into logs a lot more in the future. I'm going to create a whole series of logs the way we've done when we we're halfway through a series on trigonometry, right? We're going to do the same thing with logarithms, right? So I don't want to go too deep into logs right now, but basically log rhythmic functions are used to to smooth things out over a certain period of time. So the way logarithmic functions work is each tick, each interval is a multiple of 10, okay? So if this is 100, this one down here is gonna be 10, and the one down here is gonna be one, okay? Over here, we're at 1,000. Next level up is a multiple of 10 is 10,000, should have left more room, 10,000, up here is 100,000, write this big so you see, okay, up here is a million, and up here is 10 million, okay. I'm going to try to fit all this in. Okay, we're at 10 million up here. And I should put them on the other side as well. Okay, so let's do that here as well. One. Ten. A hundred. A thousand. So what we need to do now is place our values here, our numbers here, on this graph, right? Now the zero is gone. We can't take logs of zeros. We'll talk about that more later, okay? Our money, $100 
in 1900 in 2017 was worth three dollars and seventy cents right so we're going to put three dollars we're going to put this here and the way the logarithmic scale works is it's not that it's just logarithmic from one tick to another ticks multiple of ten it you know from one to two two is actually like up here it's not down here in the middle here is not five logarithmic scale basically starts off jumps bigger and it gets slower jumps as you go higher up closer to 10 value right so three would be if that's two that's three so three would be around here okay. now again log scales are used to smooth things out so instead of this thing going like this this thing's going to more do a little bit of fluctuation and then basically be a straight line going to here okay so we can think about this as a straight line and you know i thought about putting the green line here and connecting up the line but i don't want the stuff to get cluttered at the beginning and what we'll do we'll probably connect up the lines at the end okay but right now I'm just going to animate that line on there, I think, right? So it doesn't get cluttered when we're talking about other things, right? When we're doing, creating the other stuff, right? Now, as far as the CPI is concerned, the CPI, right? The CPI we're about to put on here. Let's put a little tick in the middle. So the CPI in 1900 was 8.9. And the CPI is basically going to be here, okay? That's nine, that's really close up to the 10. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make these ticks a little bit more pronounced because the odds are these guys are gonna go on top of these things. So we wanna see exactly where these guys are, right? This guy. And the CPI has gone from 8.9 to 244 in 2017. 244, again, that's 100. That's 1,000, right? And 100 jumps up to about here. So 244 would be around here. Okay? That's where the CPI is. And again, this does a little jumps, but you can think about it as a straight line going from there to there. Okay? It's legit. It's doable. Now, let's look at one of the other measures. I'm gonna put the little stickies on the side that we end up using so I don't double use them for now anyway. There's a few that we're gonna put on here. I think we have enough different, different uh, colors to do this.